In this video, we're going to talk about how importing and exporting works in Figma. Let's start with importing. So what exactly can we import? Well, Figma supports JPEGs, PNG, and SVG files. You can also import sketch files. There are a couple ways that we can import files. First, we can simply click and drag an image onto the file browser. You'll see a blue outline around the screen, and when you release to drop the image, a new file will be created, and the image will be added to the file. We can also head to the toolbar and select the Import File icon. You can hit Command-Shift-K or Control-Shift-K in Windows for the shortcut here as well. From here, we could choose our image and select Open to import our file. In addition to importing files into the browser, we can also import images directly into files themselves. I'll start by clicking the plus icon to create a new file. Just like in the file browser, we can drag an image directly onto our canvas to import it. Here, you'll see I've dragged a simple icon onto our canvas and it imported directly where I let go. You can also drag and drop a folder of images onto the canvas. As long as the images are supported file types, Figma will place the images side by side on the canvas. This can be a real time saver. Another way we can import images into our file is by using the Place Image feature. I'm going to select the Menu icon, then choose File, and then Place Image. Command-Shift-K or Control-Shift-K on Windows is the shortcut if you'd prefer. Now I can select as many images as I'd like and then select Open. You'll notice a red badge letting us know how many images we've selected, as well as their file type directly next to it. We can click to drop the images one by one on the canvas if we need them in specific places, or the Place All button will drop all of the selected images in one place and you can reposition them later. If you have multiple Figma files open in different tabs, you can copy and paste images across files. I'm simply just going to copy this image and paste it into this canvas. If you're coming from Sketch, this also works by copying your image from Sketch and pasting directly into Figma. Now let's talk about exporting. You can export anything as a PNG, JPEG, or SVG. However, before we can export, Whatever we'd like to export will need to have an export setting added. You can add export settings to the canvas itself, slices, any objects such as vector objects or text objects, groups, and frames. Let's start by selecting a single layer, either by choosing it from the Layers panel or by drag selecting it on the canvas and then Let's click the plus icon next to export in the properties panel to add new export settings for the object we've selected. You'll notice we have some options here. First, we have our multiplier. This determines the size of our output. The rectangle we've selected is 250 pixels by 250 pixels. With our multiplier set to 1x, our rectangle will export at exactly that. If we change the multiplier to 2x, those pixel values would double. In addition to the multiplier options in the drop-down menu, we can also manually enter our own. You can set specific pixel dimensions. If we wanted this rectangle to output at 1000 pixels wide, we can enter 1000W. If we want to output it at 1000 pixels tall, we enter 1000H. We can add multiple export settings for a single layer. This allows us to export the same asset with a variety of settings in just one single export. It's important to note that our exports get their file names from the name of the frame, group, or layer being exported. Our layer is currently named rectangle and therefore would be exported with the file name rectangle.png. When we change the layer name to red square, the exported file will be named redsquare.png. You can also append the name of your exports without needing to change the name of the layer specifically in your file with the suffix field. For example, if I add hyphen iOS hyphen only in the suffix field, 
the exported file name will be changed accordingly. Now, let's look at some additional settings. You'll notice a checkbox for contents only. This affects whether the selected layer is exported in isolation or not. When the contents only box is unchecked, any layers that overlap the selected layer will be shown in the export. To illustrate this, I'm going to move our red square behind our blue square and then select preview where we can see that the preview is showing our blue square overlapping the red square. If we once again select contents only, you'll see that regardless of what other layers may overlap it, only the selected layer will be exported. The preview tool is really handy. When you're ready, select the export button and choose your export destination. Now, let's talk about the export picker. It's possible to have very large design files with numerous elements on the canvas that all have their own export settings. Using the export picker, we can quickly see anything on the canvas that has an export settings. With nothing on the canvas selected, select the export picker icon from the top right of your screen or use Command Shift E or Control Shift E on Windows to open the shortcut window. This window shows us everything currently available for export. A cool feature of the export picker is that if you select the icon of one of your available exports, Figma will zoom directly to that specific item and bring it to the center of the canvas. If you have multiple exports available, you can select the checkbox of each individual export to turn off which ones will actually be exported upon selecting export. Let's look at another feature. I'm going to zoom out and use the F shortcut to drag a frame around our contents. With the frame selected, I'm going to click the plus icon and add a new export setting. When we look at our preview, we can see the white frame background on all of our rectangles. When we change the background color of our frame to gray, our export preview updates as well. Let's say the background color of your frame, in this case gray, was simply presentational and not meant to be included in the export. Well, just below the background color setting, we can uncheck the box that says show in exports and watch as our preview now has a transparent background for all of our squares. One last thing I want to call attention to is the export settings in code mode. Remember, in Figma, you can share your files with others and give them either full edit permissions or restrict their access to view only. Someone with full access to the file will see the design prototype in code tabs at the top of the properties panel. However, when you share the file with someone and give them view only permissions, the recipient will only see the code tab. They will not see the other two tabs. They will have access to all of the export settings that the designer has added to the file. But what if something was overlooked and the view only recipient of the file needs to add additional export settings? Viewers have the option to add additional export settings as needed. However, when the file is refreshed, any additional export settings that were added will not persist. This lets viewers do what they need to do without needing full edit permissions to the file. Figma gives you full control over how you import and export your files. Thanks for watching.